The Russians claim that the Ukrainian army is trying to blow up a bridge in the Kursk region near the settlement of Glushkovo. Several Z-War correspondents reported that the bridge across the Syme River was attacked by missiles of the Ukrainian armed forces, but managed to survive. Large holes up to a meter in diameter are visible in the road surface. The Russians warn that the bridge could eventually be blown up. Russian propagandist Roman Alakine reports that the attack on the bridge took place last night. This is an alarm bell, because the second strike with completely different weapons shows that they will continue to strike and try to destroy the bridge completely, he writes. According to him, blowing up the bridge will make it difficult for the Russian military to deliver ammunition and reserves. In response, the propagandist demands that the bridges across the Dnieper be destroyed. Britain did not give Ukraine permission to use Storm Shadow long-range missiles transferred to Kyiv against targets in the Kursk region during the rapid offensive operation. The Telegraph writes about this, citing a source in the UK government. The publication noted that London had not changed its position on the use of its missiles supplied to Kyiv to self-defense and not for conducting offensive operations on Russian territory. We have clearly stated that the equipment provided by Great Britain is intended for the defense of Ukraine, the source told the publication. It also reports that the decision on what purposes the Ukrainian armed forces can use Storm Shadow for also depends on France, which developed these missiles together with Britain. Ukraine also asked the US to use long-range ATACMS missiles during the breakthrough into the Kursk region of the Russian Federation. Washington has not yet given its consent, the Telegraph notes. Earlier, President Zelensky, against the backdrop of the breakthrough of the Russian border and the offensive of the Ukrainian army near Kursk, instructed the Foreign Ministry and the Defense Ministry to seek permission from Western partners to use their long-range weapons. The head of state stated that this would speed up Putin's political end and the military defeat of the Russian Federation. But Dmitro Levos, international political analyst at the United Ukraine think tank, believes that Western partners don't prohibit Ukraine from using their weapons on Russian territory as Ukraine operates within the framework of international law. He shared this opinion on Espresso TV. There is nothing fundamentally new about the authorization to use our partners' weapons. None of our partners have prohibited us from using their weapons on Russian territory. The only restriction applies to long-range missiles that are of operational and strategic significance. We are not forbidden to use vehicles, artillery and other tactical level weapons, Levos explained. He emphasized that Ukraine operates within the framework of international law and is entitled to use various methods to defend against Russian aggression. We are not prohibited from using vehicles, artillery and other types of weapons as we act in accordance with international law. We have the right to use various means to repel Russia's aggression. Moreover, for the West, the weapons we use on Russian territory do not carry significant symbolic meaning and are not deployed deep within Russian territories, he added. All that was left of the Russian border post were ruins stray dogs and abandoned customs declarations. The Russians fled hastily under pressure from advancing Ukrainian troops. As the New York Times reports, Ukrainian armored vehicles have breached the border unhindered, covering the flow of infantry. The largest foreign invasion of Russia since World War II continues. At the checkpoint, a Ukrainian soldier standing on the side of the road waved to the forces passing by. But a few days ago, the Russian chief of staff said the attack had been repelled. The border is littered with the debris of a lost battle. The remains of Russians, bullet casings and discarded body armor. The move onto Russian soil was a significant moment for Ukraine in its war with Russia. During the first month of the war, Ukraine did strike back with a helicopter assault across the border and regularly bombed Russian oil refineries and airfields with drones. Two smaller previous incursions into Russia by groups of Russian exiles backed by the Ukrainian army ended in rapid retreat. But until last week, Ukrainian troops had not invaded Russia. The Ukrainian armed forces easily cut through the thinly defended border, advancing dozens of kilometers into Russia and changing the history of the war after a dismal year. Two dozen settlements have been captured. 
I'm happy to ride a tank into Russia, and it's better than them riding tanks into our country, said one Ukrainian soldier. Not all the equipment survived. Journalists saw flatbed trucks hauling damaged Max Pros into Ukraine. On either side, several houses had been destroyed by Russian airstrikes, indicating brutal air attacks. Where the road ran across high, open plains, plumes of smoke rose from all directions. There are many risks for Ukraine. The offensive is intended to force Russia to divert troops from the fierce fighting in eastern Donbass, which has not happened so far, and to gain leverage in peace talks, although none are planned. The question remains whether Ukraine can hold Russian soil long enough to achieve these strategic goals, the publication writes.